Then Sri Karam project via Nagaland, which was approved in 1998, will be much shorter in distance and much more viable. In fact, it is short, shorter by 125 kilometers. I am therefore strongly of the view that the abandoned Dipu Karong railway project should be taken up at first with the ultimate idea of extending it further to more minor countries via, via Impa and then to the South Asian countries. In regard to air connectivity, Nagaland is also planning to construct a new greenfield airport at Rajathema, located between Kohima and Dimapur, which can be later on developed into international airport. We are looking for funding for this project also. I think the second most important infra infrastructural gap of this region is power or electricity, both in terms of adequate availability and its efficient uh, transmission and distribution system. The present power infrastructure, especially the transmission and distribution system, is far from satisfactory. Now, Tripura has surplus power. Arunachal Pradesh will also have surplus in the near future. But due to inadequate transmission and distribution system in, in Northeast region, it cannot be efficiently shared with the other Northeastern states. This problem needs to be addressed urgently as without adequate and reliable power supply, no worthwhile development can take place in this technological and computer age. On the topic of seamless border trade with Bangladesh and Southeast Asia, let me share my views and talk on indo myanmar sector. The issue of Bangladesh sector can be better explained by representatives of Tripura, Meghalaya, and Assam. And I'll leave it to them. At the moment, the government of India seems to be keen on fencing of all our international borders. Well, everybody knows the logic behind the fencing of India's land borders with Pakistan and Bangladesh. The same logic does not apply in the case of India's land border with Myanmar, especially in the Nagaland sector. The international boundary does not follow a river or other convenient landmarks. It rather follows the watershed uh, principle. Since Nagas and other countries tribal generally set up their village on, on the hilltops. The international boundary divides many villages into two, two halves. In the case of Longoa village in Mon district of Nagaland, the international boundary runs right through the middle of the village chief. We call it An, An's house, where half of his house is in India and the other half is in Myanmar. You enter his house from India and walk out from the back door into Myanmar. So these are the situations on ground. I cite this example to show how badly the Nagas and the ancestors land have been divided by the Indo-Myanmar border. Naturally, the villagers have to continue their movement across the international boundary almost on a daily basis for their agricultural activities. Hence, 
Border fencing is not a viable proposition in Nagaland sector. Another peculiar character of this sector is that in spite of the open and unguarded border and in spite of the free movement regime, there has been practically no migration of the native Naga across the international border. This is basically because of the strong attachment the Nagas have for their ancestors' land and because of their traditional land holding system. I'm stressing on this point as I want the policy makers and planners to clearly understand this peculiar nature of Nagaland sector of indo myanmar border. The situation is more or less similar in Manipur and Mizoram sector of Myanmar border. In fact, what we need is not barbed wire fencing, but construction of roads along, along and across the border. In fact, we need proper communication between the two countries, instead of keeping this as a wildlife center. So as to unlock the landlocked areas and promote trade and development in this area. It is the absence of roads and communication that makes these areas the perfect hiding ground for various other ground groups. Restriction on various construction activities in moderate areas need to be relaxed for indo myanmar border. The Ministry of Defense and Ministry of Home Affairs have been imposing various restrictions on construction and other development activities in the border areas due to security reasons. For example, there is a restriction for construction of road within 25 kilometers of aerial distance from international border. In the hill terrains of indo myanmar border and aerial distance of 25 kilometers from the border can mean a lot. Some Subdivisional and block headquarters are actually located within such distance from both sides of the country. Many of the roads being, being constructed under PMGSL, MNREGA, and BA are within such 25 kilometers of aerial distance from the border. In the case of Indo Myanmar border, this restriction need to be Need, need not be imposed. And in fact, we have not followed it in practice. In view of special situation, I have stated earlier in many, many of the important meetings. What we need is to develop and to open up this lock area not border fencing or restriction on developmental and construction activities. Otherwise, how can we promote border border trade or people-to-people -people connectivity in this region? Another area of concern I would like to do is there is a need for better internet connectivity in the Northeast region to enable the Northeast uh, people to fully participate as equal partner in building regional value change. The telecom and internet connectivity in the in the north in the northeast region is generally poor. This has been preventing the English speaking and internet savvy youth of the Northeast from effectively utilizing the global internet highway for educational 
and business purposes. This situation is not favorable for building people-to-people -people contact with mainland India and the people of Southeast Asia, or for building regional value change across the Northeast region. I urge the government of India to expedite the proposal to bring broadband internet uh, network to Northeast region via Cox Bazar, Bangladesh, so that the Northeast region can fully participate in the building of people-to-people -people content, as well as regional value change via internet and information technology enabled service. In conclusion, let me once again thank the FIKI and the government of Tripura for organizing and hosting this summit. I hope that good policy decision would come out of the discussion and recommendation of this summit. And I hope and pray that we'll all meet in Nagaland in the next summit. Wish you all the best.